Hello, everyone, and welcome to a brand new uh, Beyond Disabilities um, series. So in this series, um, it's sort of a spin-off of when I went to Disney World last a year in Orlando. Um, this is specifically for UK theme parks. Um, and to start with, um, I'm hoping to make a series. Um, might, might be over the, this year, might be over next year. Who knows? But I can definitely kick it off with episode one. Where episode one, well, I went to... Alton Towers Resort. So, for those who don't now don't know, Alton Towers is a UK theme park based in Staffordshire, here in England. Um, it is owned by um, Merlin Entertainment, um, but it, it used to be owned by Two Swords, and it started off as an international uh, as a international. No, it didn't. It started off as a um country house with a few fair rides. Um because uh, the towers um, are a lovely, grand, stately home um, in the middle of Staffordshire. Um, and then it sort of evolved with fair parent rides initially, a zoo, um, but then uh, sort of expanded and became uh, the theme park that we know and love today. Um, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about um, the new... Uh, Merlin uh, Ride Access Pass system, their uh, partnership uh, with Nimbus, um, and how I found it yesterday. So let's start at the beginning. So I've had a Merlin Ride Access Pass for the last three years. They tend to last um, uh, three years before you have to apply again. Um, unfortunately, I was literally just a week out before I was going to Haunt Towers. So I had to apply again, um, which was fine. So I went on the website um to give you context, I already had a Nimbus card uh, from another uh, attraction I went to, so that was still in day, um, which sort of complicated the process a little bit. Uh, so I went on the website, um, filled in the ride access pass form, I was accepted, which was great. Um, then I was trying to do uh, link my Nimbus card, and which was was which was a bit difficult uh, because. It just wouldn't let me uh, link my current Nimbus card with my ride access pass, um, which was a bit odd. Um, so I got in contact with them. They really helped. Uh, apparently, I did it months ago in Bart. I don't remember doing it. Maybe it just automatically linked. Uh, who knows? But I got it sorted out. So uh, my Nimbus form was linked. Nimbus card was linked to the Merlin ride access pass. Now, you cannot do this on the date. I must stress um, it is important that you do this before you arrive at any Merlin Park, because they don't issue any on the day. Um, so, yeah, um, what you need to do is, yeah, that you apply for the Nimbus, which is, they, they're they more strict than the ride access pass. You need medical evidence, like a doctor's letter, for example, with your condition, as well as reasonings as to why uh, you need a ride access uh, pass. Nimbus card, you can do a free one, or it's, yeah, I can't remember five pounds for three years maybe 15 pounds for three years something like that um but it doesn't just get you to merlin attractions or Alton towers it gets you across uk um i think they might be going international as well because i'm hearing stuff about uh the disney access service uh sort of revamping lincoln uh with nimbus um yeah I, i'm not that's not confirmed yet so yeah, did that. Um, now just to stress, any previous users of the Merlin Ride Access Pass as well as the new Nimbus partnership, you now need to pre-book your uh, visit in advance uh, as well as your normal entry visit, but for the disability pass as well, which is done by a specific part of their website. Now, when I first read this, I thought, well, isn't that just limiting the amount of disabled people park, which is wrong? Um, and I, I'll be honest, um, to a degree, it, it does sort of feel like that. However, um, when I went yesterday, I went to Walton Towers yet yesterday. Please excuse the news alert. Um, so usually before there's a massive queue outside uh, guest services waiting to get a time card. So for those who don't know, for some reason, and it makes no sense to me, with Berlin Parks, Thought Park and Walton Towers, it's a paper-based time card. But for the younger parks... For Legoland and Chesterton, it's that base system. For me personally, much easier if you do it rest uh, a uh, app based system, uh, especially the brilliant D dash scheme at Disney. Um, it works really well doing it on an app because you can pre book your rides throughout the day. Uh, when you go into Run Ride, you go unlock another, etc. After a allotted time, I don't understand uh, why they haven't rolled out the app. Um, 
to all the parks. It makes no sense because there is an Orton Towers app um, and I have made improvements this year, especially with queue times and things like that and uh, navigation. However, I don't know why. Uh, dis- and, and, and also now you can put tickets in the app, but I don't understand uh, why uh, you can't just have the time card on the app. It, it's ridiculous. They have to have a pen, uh, which did lead to some problems yesterday, which we'll go into in a bit. Um, so you need a time card. Keep time cards. Yeah. For some reason, I used to be on a yellow card. Now I'm on a red base card. I'm not really entirely sure. I To me, and I'm probably wrong, and I do apologise if I offend anyone, but um, to me previously, um, uh, I would... Uh, I thought the differences were physical being the red card. So if you're in a wheelchair, any physical uh, differences or disabilities, and then yellow, sort of the more um, developmental conditions like autism uh, and you learn difficulties, ex- dis- disabilities as well. Uh, but I, I, I'm on a red scheme. I don't know why. It didn't really make any difference to my day. Um, right. So that was okay. So this is going on a slight off tangent, uh, for a bit, but with Alton Towers, uh, it was open 10 till 4 yesterday. I understand it's the off season, uh, but for some reason, it just, even with my disability pass, it wasn't busy. There weren't massive crowds. It was a weekday uh, time of recording. It was uh, Friday, 26th of April, 2024. Um, there weren't lots of crowds. Um, obviously, the sky rides down, which I completely understand. Um, which Skyride is sort of their uh, cable car system in Alton Towers. Um, they're, they're, it's been there since day one, over 40 years old. Um, I get they need to repair. That's fine, not a problem. The monorail, uh, so for some reason there's no VIP parking or express parking, I think they call it. But basically pay a bit more, you park close to the park. Um, now, uh, the car parks... Alton Towers, for those that don't know, is a lot about, I'd say, a good 20 minute walk to the entrance from the car parks. Um, with its best parking, you can obviously park closer. Now, what I think they need to do is get a sort of, you know, car park sort of trolley system similar to Disney. Um, I think that would work really well. It wouldn't cost them an awful lot because the monorail was only running two trains yesterday, um, which sounds a lot, but it really wasn't for the amount of people in the park. Um, we spent 25 minutes just waiting when we arrived just to get on the monorail. Um, and again, the monorail is an opening day ride, so I understand that you know, it's not easy to get parts. If they've broken down, it might take longer. I, I, I understand that, but they need a replacement in place. Um, not necessarily a new monorail, but like I said, just a temporary thing. If they had shuttle buses between the car parks or if they had, uh, like I said, the car park trolleys similar to Disney, that would work really, really well. So uh, I feel sorry for those who didn't you didn't have this bid pass because obviously you've got fast track. But um, the queue, the maximum queue we waited uh, yesterday was about half an hour. However, I imagine uh, the problems with the skyline and the monorail ate into a lot of people's day. Like I didn't manage to get on all the uh, rides that I want. Well, no, that's not true. I managed to get on the rides I wanted to, but on previous visits, uh, I managed to get around a lot. Uh, more uh, rides uh, on busier days. It just made no sense. I think it, that whole difficult with the monorail ate into the day a lot. And this isn't a negative video. There's, there are a lot of positives. For example, um, I'll go into positives now. Um, I've rode uh, on Nemesis Reborn. For those that don't know, Nemesis uh, has been a ride that was started opening in 1994. It was enclosed the last couple of years. Um, phrase track work, uh, sort of update the theme in an area. Um, it's really, really good. The theming's brilliant. Um, Nemesis Up Terror, I've never been on that before. Um, that was a unique ride, uh, not to spoil uh, anything. If you want, don't want to spoil, look at look at pause it now or skip ahead. Um, but uh, Nemesis Up Terror is sort of like a underground drop, drop tower. Um, it has some really good special effects, live actors as well. Uh, the Phalanx, honestly, the marketing for Nemesis Reborn was brilliant leading up to the reopening. The phalanx are brilliant. They've got live actors roaming uh, the whole area, not just uh, in Forbidden Valley, but uh, the whole other areas as as well, like the Smiler. They had people um, wandering, which I thought was really well. The phalanx interacted you, Free the Beast, Nemesis. <laughs> Nemi, Nemi has feelings too. Um, so yeah, that was really good. Um, so yeah, the, uh, there was, uh, again, I understand rides break down, but just to flip it on its back, one slight negative as well was that 
Curse of Autumn Manor, Nemesis Subterra both broke down a few times throughout the day. Like I was really fortunate, I managed to go on a Curse of Autumn Manor, man, a brilliant, scary modern ghost train ride. That was brilliant, but uh, yeah, um, there's a down season for a reason. Um, I get your shot, but you need to repl- make sure all the rides are working when you do have a open. No, I think it has to be open nearly a month now. Um, I understand rides break down, but to break down three times throughout the day, um, especially the newest rides as well. I mean, Nemesis was reborn was fine, but uh, Subterra and Curse of Autumn Manor was uh, quite shocking the amount of times I broke down yesterday. Um, I was very lucky. I was fortunate because they were the three rides I really wanted to ride. I managed to get onto while they were working. However, I know half an hour before the park closed, Curse of Autumn Manor just after we came off. Um did uh, break down and didn't reopen it so back back onto positives now went to the royal coaster restaurant food now the food um i recommend theme park world rise video the food of cross Orton towers has gone up exponentially um and i we were a bit hesitant to go to the um roller coaster restaurant first of all but i'm glad we did because they completely revamped the menu they've added new lighting new smoke effects um, I had the Nemesis Reborn burger, which was tandoori chicken, which topped with mint yogurt sauce. Um, came with a uh, garlic and chili salt. Now it is pricey. It's more it is probably the premium uh, sort of food outlet in the park. However, oh, saying that it was a lot cheaper than the pizza and pasta buffet that's gone up to twenty one pounds an hour, which is a hell of a lot. Um, I think Merlin and Orton Towers could afford to reduce the food prices exponentially. I know they've outsourced it to our mark, but um some of their food outlets but it something needs to happen uh, with those food prices because we could see it in the next few months go up to 25 pounds maybe even more for uh, for like the pizza and pasta buffet and like the others creep up to 20 pound mark which isn't good enough um it's not good bear in mind merlin's like quite financially well off and i know they run a lot of places across the world but they need to sort of ref- no, it's not eat cheap to get into the park. So if they want people to eat at the parks, they need to reduce the prices um exponentially. Uh, but the food was really nice in Roller Coast restaurant. I definitely recommend it. Um been before previously it wasn't that great, but ever since I've refranked the whole menu, um I definitely recommend going there. It's really tasty. Uh what else can I say? Now there was one issue with the ride access pass. So I was expecting for it to get a new card uh, when I uh went to get services um, and scan the book. You get a barcode with the pre-book and they scan it. Um, I was expecting to get a new card, but they didn't do that. Now, it didn't cause problems until the let- letter and day, and this isn't against anything of the uh, staff members because they're all really lovely and helpful, and they were doing their job, rightly so. Um, uh, but towards the end of the day, I think it was on the Wickman um, and what's the other one? The Smiler as well. Um, got asked, I uh, did show my... Right my access pass, which I explained, I, I wasn't issued a new one. Like I've obviously been approved for one because I've got the barcode. Um, and I'm fine with that. Um, so I had to go back towards the end of the day and um, just to get a new card because I didn't want like I'm going to Thought Park later this year, which will be another episode in the future of this sort of mini series. Um, but I didn't want any problems like to occur then um because uh, I, 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 I rightly could have refused me onto the ride um because i didn't have a, a photo cut my own ride access pass but all in all it was a really good day out i'm glad we went it was nice going on a weekday and i booked the day off from work um definitely recommend the crowds were low the queues were low it was nice that say the weather was lovely as well um i just yeah overall it was a really positive nice nice day to just needs merlin needs to sort of um look at Alton Towers and sort of improve food prices like it needs to be cheaper improve transport offerings like I get that the sky rides down and the monorails like they're both the same age um you need to do something about transport between the car parks and and the park it's not that hard just get a parking a uh, sort of trolley or land train or something to help transport people um Especially as some like if the express parking goes really really quickly, um, it's not it wouldn't cost you an awful lot. Um, I'm not talking about in the park because transport the walk, there's lots of like step free routes. Or right, it does take it out of you if you're not used to like walking a lot like me. But you need to improve that throughput to actually to get into the park. So um, 
hopefully yeah, Merlin will look at this. I doubt it, but um, fingers crossed they'll look at this and, and sort of review and improve the transport offerings because two monorails isn't enough. Like, yes, they can sit six people per carriage, but two trains, it takes a good five, ten minutes between like when you're on the monorail, but then 25 minutes waiting to get to the park. That's not good at all. But yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, If you'd like to see, see more Beyond Disabilities content, um, the podcast on Spotify and on YouTube, as well as wherever else you get your podcast to, um, the main podcast episodes, uh, I am continuing finding guests and recording them, so just keep an eye out for those. Um, But yeah, I'm hoping to go to all like a lot of theme parks this year in the UK. Um, Alton Towers was the beginning. Going to Thought Park in October for Fright Nights, um, which will be my first ever one. So looking forward to that. Um, so I'll, I'll be able to give you an insight into that. Um, and also, um, yeah, I'm hoping Legoland, Chesington. I haven't been to those two for years since I was a child. So it'll be good to see how the app-based system works at that part. But yeah, um, and this has been Beyond. You know, my name's James. Um, I've got autism dyspraxia, and this is Beyond Disabilities. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye. Bye now.